it was really an honor to visit the Republic of Korea and have the first bilateral engagement between NASA and the Korea Aerospace Administration. But I do want to highlight and point out that we have years of relationship with CARI and CASI, the uh, Aerospace Research Institute and the um, uh, Space, the Science Institute as well, Astronomy and Science Institute. And so we've had those relationships for a long time and we have been working on projects together. Um, I'm going to highlight the existence of the Korea Pathfinder Lunar Orbiter. Um, which um, is already in place and in fact shows Korea's commitment to open science and sharing science data and that was wonderful. Uh, really, really appreciate that. So really now I think uh, this big step forward for Korea is to have what we call a front door. Um, it's a place to engage with other space agencies and we find that when you have that focus at the top uh, it enables you to actually deepen and broaden your cooperation. So uh, I was very excited to have that discussion and I'm very excited for Korea that they've taken this step forward. We have a goals, we have objectives, we have a vision for how to leverage learning the moon to go on to Mars. But then the next question is, and South Korea, what are you trying to achieve? And I usually recommend looking at technology strategies or actually at things that uh, the country does very, very well. And of course, everyone in the world knows that South Korea is an economic and technological powerhouse, particularly in the area of robotics, communications, everything we need here on Earth, we need in space too. And it can be easier to actually leverage your strengths and just convert them uh, to what will work in space. And mm -hmm. so again, I go back to this, the, the science cooperation is going to be very powerful. But I think that Korea has a lot to offer in the architecture in many areas, robotics, communication, uh, and many other areas as well. Well, it, First, we have to figure out what areas we want to collaborate in. NASA has the transportation system. And, uh, you know, unsurprisingly, there's not a lot of seats. And so that is a key part of the architecture. And we're looking to partnerships that provide equal contributions, roughly, to what it takes to transport people. And so recently we signed an agreement with Japan. They're gonna provide a pressurized rover and operate it and maintain it for 10 years on the surface of the moon. And as a result of that cooperation, we agreed to have two astronauts down to the surface of the moon. So you can see that's the order that it has to go in. We have to figure out what we're going to do, and then we have to understand how big of a contribution to the architecture that's going to be. Absolutely, I think that's uh, there's a very strong potential for that. So this is important to us geopolitically as well. It's not just NASA and CASA, it's actually US and Korea together. So these are long programs and that's very powerful. And by the way, we're not just interested in Mars, we're trying to build a blueprint, practice it on the moon and then demonstrate it on Mars for sustained human presence for peaceful exploration and responsible exploration of the solar system. And so this isn't just a step to Mars, it's a step to the destinations beyond that throughout the solar system. But it's really important to understand that the focus is learning. It's about science. It's about understanding ourselves, our place in the universe, the development of Earth in the solar system, and maybe find life. So this is one of the most grand efforts that could ever be set upon. And we think it's really important to do it as humanity with our like-minded partners who agree with us on democratic principles, on transparency, who are trustworthy partners. It was actually in 2007 was my last flight that oh, yeah. I commanded a space shuttle mission uh, on an assembly mission to the International Space Station. And I will tell you that the Earth is unbelievably beautiful from space. The pictures, even the video that we shared don't do it justice. 
it's it's absolutely magic. And I think one of the key points that most people who go to space, all people, I think, really experience is something we call the overview effect, which is realizing you go completely around the entire Earth. That's every human being, every book, every piece of music, every piece of architecture ever built in 90 minutes. And you realize how small the Earth really is and also how deeply connected we are. It's just silly when you look at the Earth to think that one country is going to solve some problem for everyone, like climate change. It's not, it doesn't work like that. We have to work together as humanity. And that is truly the perspective that astronauts get from working in space. 